Hey everyone, this is Kendall from the Recording Lounge Podcast, and I just wanted to do a very simple, brief explanation of what is phase cancellation. Now, I have another video about phase versus polarity, and a video about checking phase on drums that I think you might find really useful and a little bit more in-depth than this one, but this is just sort of a very basic experiment to demonstrate what phase cancellation is and what's happening when two microphones have phase cancellation issues. So to do this, I've got a couple of sine waves here. Um, the first set is just, I've got this simple sine 50 hertz wave, and in theory, this would be like two microphone signals in phase with each other, where we have um, this one going positive when this one is positive, this one is negative when this one is negative, right? Those are in phase. So what I've done is routed these to a bus, and then I'm recording from that bus so we can see the resulting waveform. So imagine these are two microphones, uh, say top and bottom snare mic, and they're in phase with each other. This is our resulting waveform. It looks basically just like the original, except a little bit louder. That's what's supposed to happen. The problem is that usually our bottom snare mic looks like that, or in some, you know, it's much more complex looking than that, but we have one that's out of phase, and the bottom snare mic needs to be flipped. Now, why is that? Okay, there's a handful of reasons why we experience phase cancellations, but in this instance, in the snare example, one of the reasons is because they're receiving that pressure wave, essentially, in opposite directions. When you hit the snare drum, the snare head dips in and goes away from the top mic and towards the bottom mic, so that pressure is sort of hitting them both in opposite directions. So we generally have to flip the phase of the bottom snare mic. So this is what happens when these two combine and they're flipped in polarity or flipped in phase. Complete silence. They're canceling out. Of course, in the real world, we don't generally deal with sine waves, so it's rarely like this. It doesn't cancel to complete silence, you know, because thousands of frequencies exist in a snare drum sound, right? So typically what we're going to deal with is something that's more like this, or some form of that, where they're a little bit different and not exactly perfect. You can see maybe you get this sort of wave, but it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like that, right? Okay, so you're getting these cancellations, you're getting low frequency cancellation, things aren't working together, the frequencies are, are literally canceling each other out. Now, Another thing that we could experience with this is if we have a microphone cable wired incorrectly, okay, where the hot and the cold, essentially, or the positive and negative, are flipped. Okay, so you might actually have two things that are in phase with each other, but the microphone cable is wired in reverse, and so you get this sort of cancellation again, okay, which that can be solved by getting a little uh, cable tester box, which is, you know, 50 or 100 bucks, and you can check all your cables and make sure that they are indeed wired correctly. Okay, but another big reason why we get phase cancellation issues is because of timing issues, right? Now, why? Because, oh no, I've got to put a room mic up on my drums, or I'm not going to get that, but then they're delayed because of the speed of sound. It's, you know, that's what's happening, essentially, is let's say this is your snare mic again, right? And it's receiving that snare signal, you know, very, very quickly. The mic is, what, two, three, four inches away from the snare drum? But a room mic, let's say, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this track because we don't need it anymore. A room mic might be 5, 10, 15, 20 feet away. So we have this time delay here, right? Now the snare signal is literally taking an extra maybe 10, 15, 20 milliseconds to even arrive at that microphone. So you might actually be experiencing a phase cancellation because of this interaction from the original to the room mic. So let's see what happens when those combine. You can see that before this reaches this microphone, this part of the wave is fine. But as soon as they catch up to each other, you get severe, severe cancellations. Again, in context of, you know, this test, but in real life it's rarely that obvious, but it's still not good. We still don't want cancellations. So this is what would happen if we were to have a mic that was delayed, but then flipped. 
Okay, now you can see that these are actually in phase with each other again because this is going negative, this is going negative, this is going positive, this is going positive. Now it's not quite the same thing as actually having things aligned in time because remember, this, we're going to just say, for example, this is the initial part of the snare hit and now this is that same snare hit just delayed in time and flipped in polarity. But it's still a better looking wave than the others. Right? It's pretty close to this. It's not perfect. You do get a little bit of kind of funkiness. It's not a pure sine wave. But again, neither is what we're working on with snare drums, right? So, typically things are not so clean. Typically we're not going to be dealing with very perfect cancellations like this or additions. We're going to be dealing with something like this where, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. Maybe they are actually in phase. Let me reverse this again. Um but they're just delayed a little bit, okay? Maybe this is the snare mic, and maybe this is the snare bleed in the hi-hat mic, right? So that's when you get this sort of situation. A kind of weird-shaped wave. Again, this is what it's supposed to look like if it was perfectly in phase. And we get this sort of, like, kind of loping, sort of strange-shaped sine wave. Now, again, you can't get rid of all these things. It's impossible to have, like, everything perfectly in phase, except if you just use one microphone on everything. Um, the closest we can get is generally using what we might call coincident pairs, something like XY, where the two microphone capsules are so close together that you're still getting a stereo image, but the low frequencies are arriving at both microphones at mostly about the same time, give or take, you know, a fraction of a millisecond. Um, so, this is basically just a description of what is happening when we experience phase cancellation on microphones. So the best thing that you can do is be very careful with microphone placement. Think about how you're placing the microphones and how they might interact. Make sure you're using the phase flip or polarity flip button. Uh, in Cubase and Nuendo, we have one right here on the channel strip, but in many, many plugins, you have one included. For example, let's say Fab Filter. FabFilter Pro Q has one right here where you can flip the polarity, right there. But we also have variable phase plugins like this one, the Voxingo PHA979. I just call it 979 because that's, I don't want to say this whole thing. <laughs> but we, in these plugins, we can do variable phase adjustments, negative 90 degrees, positive 90 degrees, and then you can flip the phase as well, okay, 180, and then do another shift, okay? And you, on this plugin, you can also do time delay, which is really useful. You can do before or after. It works with your DAW with delay compensation to actually be able to shift this wave in time earlier, which is really neat. It's a really useful plugin. But with all of these tools, you can get a handle on your phase and make sure that your microphones are sounding good together. And trust me, it's very difficult when you're dealing with 10, 12, 14 mics on a drum kit to make sure that all the phase is kind of working as best as it possibly can. You know, again, it's not going to be perfect, um, but the idea is to get it as good sounding as you can. There's not really a rule like, oh, these have to be in phase or flip to phase. If one sounds better to you, you can leave it that way. Again, go ahead and check out the video I have on checking phase on drums and phase and polarity. I hope this has been just a really simple sort of visual to help you understand what phase cancellation actually is and why it can be really, really damaging to our recordings with multiple microphones or, if we do it correctly, why it can help our sounds be fuller and combine in nice, beautiful ways. Thanks for checking out my video. Check out the other videos on my YouTube channel, and check out recordingloungepodcast.com.